Firehouse subs. Welcome to Firehouse. Take off your helmet and hang your heat resistant jacket by the door. Remember to collect on the way out. Those before you clearly forgot. A sandwich chain known for big portions. Big on theme too. If you go along with it, which is tempting, your lunch hour escape from the office could take on purpose. With none of the risk. You make brief eye contact with a fellow diner. You both nod, knowing you have each other's back. The people back at your office wouldn't understand. They also wouldn't understand why you're now stood in the queue making the sound of a siren. The start came in Jacksonville, Florida in 1994 when two second generation firefighting brothers Chris and Robin Sorensen opened the first Firehouse Subs restaurant. Not their first attempt at a business. Like most firefighters, they seem to spend more time doing everybody else's job than their own. This is understandable given the intensity of their shifts and dedication needed. Firefighters should be paid a lot more. Few jobs carry the level of respect and kudos and rightly so, but we live in a world where respect doesn't pay the bills. Dancing on TikTok does, so a lot of firefighters look to supplement their income with other work. If you're skilled at rescuing a kitten from a tree, it makes sense to shampoo and comb the kitten as well for a little extra cash on the side. The brother's father, a career firefighter himself, and their mother owned a TV retail store that operated as a side business for the Sorensen family. The boys would experience firsthand growing up the importance of hard work and how to run a successful retail business. Both brothers, following in their father's footsteps, not only went on to be firefighters, but they also inherited the same entrepreneurial spirit of their parents. Chris Sorensen was an aspiring musician and moved to Washington DC. When the music career failed to materialize, he moved back to Florida to be a firefighter. But a $14,000 salary at the time wasn't enough. Chris and his brother Robin, also a firefighter, would do odd jobs, from painting houses, mowing lawns, and they had their own videotaping business. Even a Christmas tree business that never launched. It was a mutual love of cooking that sparked the idea of opening up a restaurant. They had discussed various opportunities, such as a southern style restaurant to a microbrewery. By now Robin had begun managing a restaurant. A friend had suggested they open up a submarine sandwich store that was looking for franchises in the local area. They went along, but after a meeting they thought they could do better themselves. The brothers committed to researching this industry for two years. A friend of Robin's was also the delivery guy for a food distributor at the restaurant Robin managed. Working as a de facto submarine sandwich spy, Robin's friend would gather intel on other restaurants, gathering information on prices and orders so that Chris and Robin had an idea of what to expect, and knowing inside information is a great way of competing in the market. Just ask Wall Street. With their planning done, it was time to open the first Firehouse Subs restaurant. They approached a guy called Tony Slyman. Slyman was a local developer that the Sorensons knew from the family's TV store days. He had been a customer and was now in a good position to offer some sound advice. On hearing the Sorensons Sorensen's idea to start a sub sandwich restaurant offering hearty affordable meals, Slimer must have really liked the idea because he gave them free restaurant equipment and then offered to build out a store for them in a new shopping centre. With this kind of help it would be rude not to start a chain of successful sub restaurants. To start with they had many things, money was not one of them. Chris went to the Jacksonville Firemen's Credit Union and received a loan for $2,000 and a $5,000 loan from their mum's cousin. In addition to that Robin borrowed an initial 10,000 from his mother-in-law that quickly turned into 15,000 and then a little more on top of that. His father-in-law was an FBI agent and having to explain to someone that knows how to make people disappear is not the person you want to be telling that you've just maxed out their credit card on turkey and mayonnaise. Undeterred and with some money borrowed from a friend and some credit from vendors, their first restaurant cost around $35,000 to open, but open it did. The doors opened with $60 in the till. This was all in and it had to work from the start. It was slightly chaotic and they weren't fully familiar with their own menu, but the gamble paid off. The restaurant managed $26,000 in the first month, which is very good going for your first month. All the family was involved from day one. Firefighter friends donated coats and hats to be used in the restaurant. Props to to them. The service of firefighting wasn't done just yet, at least not for Chris. Margins were still thin and to maintain a wage Chris stayed on with the fire department, but after four years of long hours he left the department in 1998. Robin on the other hand had been working full time with the business. Surviving on a low salary of twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a year, they scraped by in the first year, running a lean operation. At this point Firehouse Subs consisted of two company owned restaurants and one franchise. The business was growing quickly. In the picture, it's difficult to know if this is a new restaurant that hasn't been built yet or one that has just burnt down.
The Sorensons were quick to start franchising and were probably a little too eager. To their credit, they were just as decisive in their next move. Having committed to another two franchises, they realised they were not yet ready. They bought back all three franchises and changed to a strategy for the next five years of only opening company-owned restaurants. This proved to be a good move going forward and the business became very profitable. It was in 2000 that the Firehouse Subs reintroduced the franchising model. This time they were coming from a stronger platform in which to build growth. Franchising consultants were hired to navigate the franchising infrastructure and once the company became debt free they were able to help franchisees with franchise loans. Firehouse Subs was becoming popular and fast. One way to become popular very quickly is hefty portions. From the get go this is what the brothers aspired to offer. This is a claim that all restaurant chains claim to do, very few manage it. Rather it usually takes special lighting, odd picture angles or someone with tiny hands holding something that appears bigger than their head. Not only did Firehouse Subs start with this premise, they appear to be maintaining it. There's a lot of meat for example that goes into one of their subs. A big reason for their success in attracting customers. So where do they fit in? Hefty portions obviously impacts the cost of the sandwich here and Firehouse Subs would definitely be in the premium chain market. Comparable to Jersey Mike's or Jimmy John's as far as the size of business and quality of sandwich. More premium fast casual brands have been doing well in recent times which is good for all concerned. The brand name stays intact. Franchisees aren't seeing the product they sell degenerate and the customer enjoys the product. The containers for their sandwiches is something different also and gives the sandwich more of a premium feel and the presentation is better than most as a result. The restaurants themselves tend to stand out. Besides the obvious firefighting regalia, custom murals can be found that are unique to particular restaurants and tend to feature local points of interest in the fight to keep that fine balance between familiarity that people rely on and customising the experience to a local market, this seems to work. Assuming people notice through blurred vision while dabbing their forehead after applying too much hot sauce to their hook and ladder sub. Progressively ranking hot sauce from 1 to 10 has been going on for a long time. Firehouse subs even decided that level 10 wasn't hot enough, combining all of them together and calling it level 55. There seems to be a lot of emphasis here on creating fire and perhaps not enough on putting it out. A future line of milkshakes ranked 1 to 10 to put the fire out might be beneficial. Just a suggestion. The firefighting theme is inescapable, but unlike other themed restaurants that can quickly turn into the ridiculous, Firehouse Subs at least has legitimacy and it doesn't interfere with the product. A few props lying around, the odd fire helmet, and a range of subs with names like Firehouse Meatball, Engineer, and Hook and Ladder, subs cold or hot, or hotter, with hefty portions is where they fit. As for the branding, it's clever. Firefighters are universally popular wherever you go, at least anywhere that you'd want to be. You have a problem. Your life's in danger. They turn up to risk theirs. It's a pretty good deal. They also don't arrest anybody, which helps. Firehouse Subs runs what the company calls its Public Safety Foundation. The foundation started after Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. Chris and Robin Sorensen both travelled to Mississippi to help feed both first responders and survivors. This foundation now helps to raise money to support first responders in local communities. This is wide ranging, but the money goes towards a whole array of things like communication tools, imaging equipment, vehicles and extrication tools for accidents. The foundation states that it has grown granted $60 million to hometown heroes of 49 states plus Puerto Rico and Canada to date. At present, a percentage of sales from Firehouse Subs goes to the Public Safety Foundation. Marketing goodwill is one thing, and many do, but this feels a little different. Currently, there are around 1,200 locations across North America, and growth is looking strong. Data from 2014 to 2019 shows a healthy picture. Going from sales of $552 million in 2014, 2014 to $832 million in 2019. Firehouse Subs has managed to position itself as a premium sandwich offering, but still staying consistent to what made the company a success. If hefty portions isn't enough to tempt you, they'll even treat you on your birthday to a free sub. You can't argue with that. While borrowing money from an FBI agent to turn your staff room into a theme of sandwich restaurants isn't advisable. If you go all in, it may just work. If your order is shouted out, be quick to respond. It's good to be a first responder. Remember that not all heroes wear capes. Capes are probably flammable. And if the hefty portions haven't convinced you, there's always a free birthday sub for you. On the house. The firehouse, that is. All things firehouse subs. Let me know. Thanks for watching.